Hey everyone, it's National Master Aaron Cooper here, and I've got a chess game that I played earlier today that I'd like to show you. In this game, see how I make use of my opponent's bad bishop and uh, prevent it from participating in the game. So here we are. I was white, and it opened d4. And I'm trying this uh, new system with g3. And my opponent played b5. So this is uh, not the most common approach for black. Black can play knight f6. Even e6 there is fine. So already black has made a commitment of three pawns on light squares. So the question is, where does that bishop go? Ideally, black would like to get it outside of the pawn chain. But watch, my opponent does not do that, and that is ultimately how I go on to win this game. So he is shutting in his own bishop voluntarily. So I decided to bring the bishop out and not fianchetto it as well. In particular, uh, I'm quite comfortable exchanging this bishop because I don't want the knight to come into here. Now, admittedly, black probably should play knight b to d7 to take back with a knight. Therefore, he still has that option. So I was quite happy when he allowed me to take and he's not taking back with a knight. So we developed the rest of our pieces. And even though my opponent has the two bishops, this bishop here is being blocked by the pawns on the same color. And rule of thumb when you have the two bishops is you want an open position, but that doesn't mean when you're the side that does not have the two bishops that you shouldn't open up the position because my knight is gonna be quite useful on a central square and it is gonna fork the queen and bishop. And that's exactly what happens because black has decided to take because black wants to open up uh, particularly this bishop. And so I take away the two bishops from black. Put my knight in a nice square. And this is the moment where I decide to solidify my knight with f4. Now I decide to take. Black cannot take back this way because that would lose the bishop. Now here was uh, an inaccuracy on my part. Black should play queen to b4. Now my thinking was I wanted to play c4 and c5. If I can get c5 in, then I'm cementing that bishop in for a long time. So admittedly, b3 was a mistake. Maybe a better way to do what I was trying to accomplish was c3 and b4 because that way the pawn is very unlikely to ever move up because white has two pawns covering that square. Okay, my opponent did not play queen before. I exchange one pair of rooks and then I get my c4 in. So at this point I was quite happy because the bishop is undefended and I'm ready to play c5 and the bishop really hasn't participated much at all during the game. Black would like to play bishop to a6 or even bishop to c8. Unfortunately that would lose the pawn on c6 because the knight and the bishop are covering it. So black brings the rook back to protect the bishop. So now there is a threat of playing c5 because the bishop is protected. So I attack the bishop yet again. 
And here I didn't play the most accurate move according to the uh, engine. Engine likes queen b4, but I was happy with my queen b2 move. I'm adding yet another attacker. So c5 is still not possible. And I decide to swap the knights. Attack the rook. And I believe that was the only move that black could play. If black, because uh, I am attacking the rook, if black moves the rook, then I win the bishop. Now it looks like maybe black gets a mating Ah, Rook takes here, does not quite work. Yes, okay, right. I thought this was, but we've got the queen holding on to the Rook. So that doesn't quite work. Also, after King H1, Queen F2 looks like we're just gonna mate white, but we can take the pawn, hold on to the bishop, and we can shoo away the queen with rook f1. Okay, so that's if the rook moves. If the bishop goes to c8, or even to a6 for that matter, that drops the c6 pawn. So therefore my opponent played bishop to a8, and now the bishop is in the corner, only has one square to go to. That is a terrible bishop. So here I did not play the most accurate. I should play rook b8 first, get my rook involved. Admittedly, this was not the cleanest way to a victory. Now, I, again, I should exchange the queens, which I did not. I thought keeping the queens on and having the pressure would be best, but take the queens off the board, play a check, and even cementing this pawn formation, I could play rook b4 if need be to protect the pawn, or rook d8 to protect the pawn, bring my king up, protect against any checks, I mean, even this, if this bishop does get out eventually, my bishop has some targets to attack, right? Because the pawns are on the color of my bishop. And you want your bishop to be an attacking piece. So black does not have a great position because uh, these pawns are on the same color as his bishop. They get in the way, and the bishop will have to help in the defense of those pawns. So this would have been probably a much cleaner way to victory. Now I allowed some unnecessary counterplay. I thought this was all safe. Giving up this C pawn. And I played this howler, h5. Now fortunately my opponent did not find the best solution. I think at this point white is, uh, sorry, black is a little better. So unfortunately I did not uh, convert things cleanly, I will admit. So on this move, h5, I'm just trying to create a mating net, take away some squares from black's king. What I calculated was check bishop, and the queen can't check us here, but queen e2 is a very strong move for black. The queen coming to g4 and also hitting the h pawn. So there's no way for me to defend that pawn if I bring the king up. That's checkmate. Not good. That would have been a spoiled performance by me. Okay. So my opponent did not see that. I open up the lines to the king. And we get a forced checkmate coming up here. Here my opponent resigned only move is king here and that would be checkmate that would be pretty checkmate 
So there you have it. My opponent had a bad bishop. I focused on it and resolved not to allow it to participate in the game. And my opponent was uh, not able to do that. So this kind of game makes me think, not that I played it perfectly like Karpov, but that was the way that Karpov would play. He would slowly squeeze his opponent um, with small positional advantages. And that's what I tried to do here. And albeit with a few tactical errors, but from a strategical point of view, I think I played this well, and I hope that this uh, helps you guys. And if you liked my video, give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for next week. We'll have another video, either a game review or a book review. So hope to see you guys then.